Well, I think we're at a pretty critical moment right now. Um, I think it's uh, there's clearly a bit of a lull uh, that the Ukrainians have achieved a significant success in in Kherson, but it, it you know they could have done more if they'd had the right resources. Talk of the Russians launching a counteroffensive, although given the scale of Russian losses, that's going to be a very big ask. So I think the initiative is waiting to be seized, uh, and I think Ukraine can do it, but they will only be able to do it if we, NATO, the West, America, really ramps up the support um, of military equipment and logistics. Right, and that's a big part of Volodymyr Zelensky's mission as we speak in Washington, D.C. He, he's just landed there and will very, very shortly uh, be in, in, in conversation with, with President Joe Biden. So if what you suggest is the, the way forward is for Ukraine to launch, is to go forward, uh, what does that look like? What does an, a Ukrainian push at this stage look like? Are we talking about launching missiles behind Russian lines, maybe longer range weapons at Russian military targets? Are we talking about a push to, to gain or rather regain territory? How would you describe it? All, all of the above. I mean, Ukrainian military objectives are very clear. They want to uh, regain every centimeter of Ukrainian territory and ensure there is no Russian soldier left on it. Uh, and that's a clearly a, a, big, a big ask. To achieve that, it's going to need a major offensive and any major offensive requires the battlefield to be shaped and part of shaping the battlefield is uh, winning the deep battle um, that means targeting striking at russian logistics uh, russian headquarters uh, ensuring that and reserve forces uh, as well as fighting the close battle uh, which means taking russian positions and advancing the old-fashioned way but it also means it does not it means ensuring that your own people can move forward with the sort of protected mobility which means that they need in order to close with the enemy and seize ground and that of yes. course requires tanks armored infantry fighting vehicles etc cetera, etc cetera. yes at the same time of course you've got to protect yourself and so air defense and protecting your own center of gravity is is essential now vladimir putin has now just given what he's called an important speech, and he's told his generals to use their experience in Syria in this in this war, which in many ways, uh, uh, Richard, is rather an ominous thing to say, isn't it, given the, the way that Russia waged its fighting in Syria, which was brutal, which was merciless. Uh, it is ominous, but it's no less than what the Russians have been doing up until now for some time. I mean, what they've done in Mariupol uh, and other Russian cities, the destruction, the massacres, um, the laying waste, literally raising cities to the ground, uh, is absolutely out of the Syrian playbook. Uh, and so I don't, I wouldn't anticipate any significant difference because they've been doing it already. Yeah, and this may seem like a, a, an innocent, naive ob observation, and I guess in many ways it is. I mean, you've studied the Russian military, military mind, and it has it has brutality woven woven into it the bit to someone like me looking in from way outside is how curious that is for a power like russia which claims ukraine as part as its own and has physically annexed a large part of uh, of, of of ukraine as russian territory and yet treating the civilians of, of that country with savage brutality the uh the, the killing the wanton killing of civilians men women and children, the torturing, the, the raping. It seems to make no sense, unless, I suppose, you understand the Russian mind on these things. It makes no sense to us, but the Russians don't think like us. The Russians have a strain of brutality um, which comes from centuries of, 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 of brutality, Mongol invasions, uh, and almost... Um, uh, in a sense, uh, an approach to civilize, you know, any form of warfare, which demands, uh, requires, in their view, mass strength, but utterly merciless, merciless, without any compunction, as you say, slaughtering civilians and, and doing terrible things. We just have to recognize that they don't think in the same way that us. And, and, and the so what out of all that is that the Russians only respect strength so that we have to match, we the West, we NATO, together with America, of course, as NATO's principal ally and leader, have to match Russian uh, aggression with strength and support the Ukrainians in every way we can.